walls between the cracks and a loophole in the Municipal Act, every company that is owned by the taxpayers should be meeting in public and all of their documents should be public unless there is a very specific legal reason that they not be. Do you have uh, factual information of some of your claims, uh, like the one that uh, you, I think you mentioned that the uh, money is being used elsewhere instead of capital goods projects like water mains? What kind of evidence do you have? Uh, very specifically, the City of Windsor budget for 2010 shows $30 million of uh, the, uh, the money from the uh, sewer surcharge going to the operational budget. This is something that has never been done uh, in the past councils, and uh, it's clearly redirecting money within the city's budget to other priorities. It's, a, it's an additional tax that they're claiming is uh, being used for something else. About the only thing I can say with the information that is public is that the money isn't going where it was intended to go and uh, that we need to open the books, that we need, we need to be able to see where taxpayers' money is being spent how it's being spent and what decisions are being made on a day-to-day -day basis by those companies that are owned by the taxpayers. If you get elected mayor, how soon will you open those books? Immediately. In fact, we'll start uh, looking behind the scenes to see exactly what has gone on over the last number of years, as well as going forward, all meetings will be open to the public. I don't you think this is the first time you've commented on Edwin, but today is Friday, people are voting on Monday. Um, why make this statement now? Over the course of this campaign, the most important things that we've been really looking at is the fact of jobs, jobs creation, and reducing taxes. Those are, are very big priorities given that we've had a seven-year run as the highest unemployment rate uh, municipality in Canada. But what's most important to, to people and what they've been telling me at the door is they also want to know what's going on with their tax dollars. And they, they really bitterly oppose these closed-door meetings and private corporations that are being used to shield the decision-makers from the taxpayers. Which books will you open the tail of the mob of the Specifically, we need to look at the entire Enwin group of companies. We need to look at uh, what is going on behind the scenes at the airport, which is also now a private company. Uh, the uh, Windsor-Essex County Development Corporation is now a private company uh, and uh, so we have to look at all of these companies and say okay just because they're structured as a corporation should not mean that they can use that as an, uh, an excuse to close their doors to the public. Rick, all these failed outfits like the water heater and access and the uh, energy now, weren't the decisions that led to those problems all made in the mid-90s? No, they weren't actually. Those companies uh, all came into uh, being after 2000 in the deregulation. So when Enwin was first formed, there was $40 million of taxpayer money that went directly into it. That's the last that we see of, of that $40 million because those companies are now private. So. There has also been hundreds of millions of dollars each year going through the Enwin group of companies through uh, their billings for electricity, for example, that are you know that uh, go on on a regular basis, and the millions of dollars transferred between these companies and the city of Windsor. It's a very complicated web of transactions, and uh, quite frankly, I can't see a, a reason on earth for it not being made open to the public. Well, I agree with that, but on the district energy, I mean, those decisions were made as part of the casino. That was in the mid-90s. I remember. I was there. The, uh, the district energy program was shut down in the 2000s. Uh, I'm not aware of all of the details because it was never properly reported out. Uh, but what I do know is it was being advertised greatly, and then all of a sudden it fell off of the map. So what went on behind the scenes there, I don't know. I'd like to find out. Why haven't you mentioned the fact that some of your family and members are on the board of Windsor Utilities Commission back in the 90s? Uh, I didn't feel it was relevant. Your father, ex-wife, were there others? No. Just those two. And that was, when, was, when did your father leave the board of Windsor Utilities Commission? Uh, when, was when was that? In the 90s. But uh, the, uh, 
the decisions made uh, by the utility commission at that time don't have a bearing. Talk about $30 million. I'm not aware of them in any case. Talk about $30 million from the citizens of Chicago and operating at least to uh, come out of regular local operations. In 1994, wasn't there a switchover so that uh, what, so those exact funds do go into general revenue? You got my vote on Monday, baby. Um, Does that 30 million not represent the cost of uh, operating it? No, uh, what we're talking about is uh, several different issues. When you're talking about the uh, sewer surcharge that originated back in the 90s, that sewer surcharge was used for capital everybody that uh, we know is supporting us to make sure that they do in fact get out and vote and uh, to continue campaigning right up until uh, Sunday. I spoke with um, Jean Fox earlier, um, with QB, she mentioned she plans on taking the day off and volunteer to get